What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with a quick video about the exchange stores and how you should use them, where you should spend your resources, uh, or at least my opinion anyway. We're going to start off in a store that's probably going to be the least touch, unless you're a big fat blubbery whale like me, and that is the premium exchange. Now, in this store, the only thing you can spend is gems, and as you can tell right now, maybe I've spent a bit too many gems recently, but it's okay. I can always get more. There's not really much in this store to worry about. If you happen to be about three shards away with an excess of gems from unlocking or finishing a character, you know, six or seven starring one, maybe it might be worth it. But ultimately, your own gem income is going to determine what you should or shouldn't do in this store. I don't think it's worth going into much more detail than that, so we're going to go straight into the store that everyone's going to have to interact with, the Daily Exchange. The Daily Exchange is where you're going to be able to convert your gold into gear, and honestly, you're going to be buying a lot. As you can tell, some items I have maybe an excess of because I'm not worried about investing in these characters or characters that take them right now, and then others, you can see. I'm running a little bit low on, so even if I am buying two, one of an item I only have a very low count of, it's probably going to end up being worth it in the long run. Uh, this is also the store I would recommend claiming a refresh on most often, like this, just in case you want to make sure you're accessing certain gear uh, as frequently as you can. And as you level, the items in this store will change, you might start seeing more tier 3 tier 4 gear as you progress. This store does tend to shift a little bit. The items in it are slightly RNG based, but there will always be at least one item you probably should purchase. So this store is just a gold exchange really, and since you're going to have an income of gold every day, it's always good to check to make sure this is one of the best ways to gain gear in the game, as farming gear is, as you know, completely RNG based. The next store is the club exchange. Now, obviously, depending on how well you're doing with your club, you may or may not have a great income of this, and it also depends on how deep you can get into the club dungeon, how often you can make sure your entire club is completing all of its daily missions. Ultimately, you should get a pretty decent amount of club currency over the course of the day, and that's where you're going to spend it. Now. As far as the exclusives are concerned, I personally would recommend Jack Sparrow over Baloo. One, because Jack Sparrow is an oceanic character and there are plenty of situations in which an oceanic character uh, will be incredibly useful to you as you progress, especially uh, when you see the other oceanics are node farmable and you only have a finite amount of energy to spend a day. At least here you know you are getting at least three Jack Sparrow shards every purchase and it's a very reasonable investment. You should definitely be able to make at least one purchase of Jack Sparrow a day, possibly even more. As for the other characters, again, I would probably lean a little bit closer to only purchasing them if you are two shards away from unlocking or starring them up and they are a character that you want to. For example, I have 69 <laughs> of 65 Syndrome Shards, I haven't even leveled him up yet, so I don't really worry about purchasing more shards for a character that I'm not worried about uh, starring up. So that's okay. Another thing to pay attention to is, again, gear. Now the stores are some of the best place to get gear, as you saw in the gold store. So it's nice to just take a quick look and see how many of an item you have, especially with a nice little green star. If you click on it, it'll tell you any character that currently needs it. and as you can see, all of my top characters, and Mulan, Simba, and Scar, all need it. So this is an item I should probably purchase. I'm going to need more of. Keep track of how many of these items you have, which is a wonderful feature, so you always know how many you have without having to click or do anything else. And you can determine if this is worth it, especially for stuff like Cinder Brooms, which you're going to need a lot of in the early game. Uh, as for the tier 4 and tier 5 materials, you'll notice the pricing is a little different. Don't be fooled. It's based on what type of item it is. There is somewhat of an item discrepancy. Some items are just what they are. Some items you combine to create better items. 
and basically that's what the separation is. A uh, strange fiber is more or less required by almost every character at pretty much any point in the game, as you can see, where a shell extract is required by at almost as many and a little bit less frequently maybe. Same with fire and luck extracts. It depends on what type of character they are, whether they're a support character, a defense character, or an offense character. Next, we'll take a quick look at the tournament exchange. As you may or may not already know from previous videos, I suggest farming Shan Yu as quickly as possible, but the tournament exchange doesn't have gear. The only thing you can buy is character shards. So the first thing I would look at is who are the exclusive characters and which one you want. My recommendations are Shan Yu, and then after you finish Shan Yu, not unlock, finish Shan Yu, or get at least reasonably close to completing him, then I could start worrying about unlocking the next characters. As you can see, the character I chose to unlock next is Mordu. I've already unlocked him. I'm working more towards him. It takes you, on average, about 53 days to go from zero shards to 330 shards of one of these characters, assuming you're in the top 200 or so of your Sorcerer's Tournament. That said, if for some reason you do want to audible, into a Merlin or a Hades, Hades being a great character, but more focused on the end game than the early game, you can, you're welcome to. Just remember you're always trading. Everything is an opportunity cost, and when you start working on something that isn't immediately going to help you, you're pushing back that progress. As for the other characters, the same basic rules apply. Since it's about 8,700 credits to purchase an exclusive character, and 6,000 to purchase four of a non-exclusive character, I think it's incredibly important to be careful about which of these characters you decide to buy in this store. Jangles is on my list because I'm very close to completing him, but other characters, it would have to be a very, very important character that I need to progress in one way or another, or I would have probably completed most of the exclusives before I even start looking at characters over here. The exceptions, of course, being Dr. Facilier and Big Bad Wolf. Those characters are absolutely phenomenal and necessary in a lot of game modes. Any extra access you have to them, especially since Facilier is only farmable way later in the game, I think will be beneficial to you. I still wouldn't work off of these characters, but once you get a character to six star, you may find, if you're succeeding very well in Sorcerer's Tournament, a little bit of extra or only purchasing an item once a day as opposed to twice a day might personally help you progress a little bit better. Uh, the next store, and the last major store to be sure, is the Tower Exchange. Obviously, the tower is a little bit of a challenge. There are five different towers, and each tower you complete is a one-time action until you get to the final tower, a tower which I personally have not yet completed. Very few have. Um, that's mostly because the game is so new. But in this store, I recommend, in general, based on what your income of credits... Now remember, you can't go back and complete a tower you already have, you have to progress. So if you can do eight or nine nodes of a tower that has 10, we'll say, you'll be getting a decent income of credits every day. If you can't, you have to be a little more discerning with what you spend. Uh, you've obviously seen my spell list here video, so that's great, but I do follow by the same rules. I only make purchases of individual items or the items required to star up or level up the spells when I need to, other than that, I would make purchases of spell packs. That said, as you progress through the towers, the spell packs level up. They become more uh, detailed with more items in them. So for me, purchasing this spell pack has a larger pool, but more spells that I might be interested in as opposed to anything else. Sometimes the spells in this store change. For example, I mentioned that Golden Hammer is a very good spell in my spell tier list video, and sometimes it shows up in this store. I will buy that on cooldown because getting it is very important. So it's really about knowing what the priority is and making sure you understand what your income of currency is 
for this store. The next three stores, well, we'll just go into it. Uh, this is the Sorcerer's Exchange. This is how you're going to obtain Sorcerer's Stones. Sorcerer's Stones are modifications you can make directly to your characters. You can check real quick. Increased health by 5%. Increased speed by 5%, unfortunately. Right now, I do not believe you can currently interact with this store in the game. It used to be a reward for completing Club Conquest. They're kind of in the process of reworking it right now, mainly because speed is a terrible stat to put on characters outside of what their design is, and when you start adding speed to the game, it really does create a negative uh, uh, even flow for everything. Once you add the ability to modify speed in a character, it becomes the only modification necessary. Hopefully they took all of the feedback to heart and are just removing speed, allowing characters gear to determine their speed and allowing synergy and team building and skill to take over. Uh, the idea of coin flips of as to when a character goes is good enough as far as max investment and that also generates a positive flow of skill where not just the strongest team of the strongest characters win but someone who understands how to interact or how the matchup will go will have a better uh, chance to win than someone who spent more money that's the goal but as of right now the store really doesn't have a way to work but again if they do and they don't take out speed, I would say speed is of course the most important, followed up by probably some level of damage for most characters because damage is how you win fights, and health obviously on tanks. I don't think I have to go into detail on that. The next store is the Token Exchange. Many of you won't be experiencing this store for a while. The Token Exchange is where you can purchase uh, Steamboat Mickey or casual shards of characters after you've maxed out the stars on one character. The cool thing about this game is that once you've got the final hundredth shard going from six to seven, or the 330th shard of a character, you can immediately start accruing the value of excess shards. And that goes to about one character shard equal to 10 coins in the store, which is great if you were to finish all of the exclusive tokens and then make purchases of these characters in order to feed this. That said, because every other character is farmable and not many of them are uh, particularly great, and since there's only one exclusive in this store, I have been buying the exclusive in the store. Do I think Steamboat Mickey is good? He looks pretty fun. We'll look at him another time, but Again, this store is not something many players are going to experience for a while, and even so, once you reach a max star on a character, I wouldn't necessarily try to farm more of those shards. This is kind of one of those stores for early and mid-game players to just interact with very infrequently, and once you get into the true endgame where all of your characters are completed, which is a time from now, then you could start worrying about how to be more efficient with these uh purchases and this currency. The final store is the whale store. Uh, not because anyone who buys VIP is a whale, but because of the items and the cost of them in the store. The VIP exchange is available to anyone who's purchased the VIP. In it, there are a handful of decent, cute little items. Most purchases, of course, are for gems, which are a whale currency, obviously, uh, and a handful are gold. So you can buy a loyalty coin, or maybe a couple of specialty character shards that aren't normally available, Jesse being only available during an event. Great, absolutely cool. You could buy gold, ah, you know, great, no big deal. You get a slight discount on a 10X Ultimate Chest Bundle or a 5X Ultimate Chest Bundle. It's a small discount, but it is still a noticeable one. So it's kind of a, oh, you bought VIP? Well, this is a little bit cheaper at least once. This store lasts for one week and you cannot refresh it, so you can't just infinite whale but it does give you a little bit more access to things you might not have had access to for example zerg and davy jones are characters that you can only get through an event and through club conquest exclusively same with robin hood tokens you only get him for completing and competing in pvp arena so a little bit extra access to these characters is definitely going to benefit you if you are interested in spending there are also a couple of other purchases available 
Uh, you can make one purchase a week of ability runes. You can make, a, you know, whether it be beta or gamma. And there are a handful of spells. All of these are one-time purchasable. Uh, and, of course, you know, spell level up material and some gear. This is... I have a love-hate relationship with VIP stores. I don't like them in general, but because it's only once a week, and because if your only purchase for the week is uh, the VIP, eh, you know, you have four weeks, maybe you can store up and wait to see something come up. Sometimes you'll find character costumes in this store. Uh, it's okay. I don't believe it imbalances the game any more so than someone who's normally spending could. But it is a limited edition store, and I don't think that anything in this store is amazing and dramatically awesome. That said, if you are a big fat blubbery whale like me, you will find that if you need to get five more Davy Jones tokens to unlock him, or if you were, if I was 80 of 85 Zerg shards towards six, you better believe I would have bought this. You know, uh, is it a great purchase? No, but. I like the game, I like the company making the game, I have no problem supporting them, and if that last Zerg shard uh, only gives me the ability to upgrade him a week, a month, two months earlier than the next event, I don't think that's creating too much of a problem. Obviously, I think if you could refresh this store infinitely, then at that point you might as well just have a credit card reader attached directly to the device and charge it for everything and be done with the game. Other than that, I don't think there's anything else I can say. Comment below, let me know what you've been buying in the store, or if you'd like to see some changes to the store, as I will reach out to uh, the members of the community, uh, the developers, and try to figure out what they could do to improve quality aspects of the game. That said, I hope you guys have a good night, have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.